Should I build a Bitcoin farm? It's a question that comes up every wipe, regardless of what price Bitcoin's at. And every wipe, I hear and read all the answers that range from it's a waste of time to everybody should build it. Now, you should trust both of these answers about as much as you trust a wet fart. God. Sorry, I farted. Neither of these answers address the intricacies of the individual player needs, nor do they even scratch the surface of the complex math involved in understanding the economics of the Bitcoin farm. In Tarkov, the price of Bitcoin is loosely tied to the IRL value. And because of the recent crash in real life of Bitcoin, we've seen the value of Bitcoin crash in the game. This has raised questions in the community that the Bitcoin farm might not be worth it, especially the really expensive level three version of it. Now, while this might be a common concern, this is the first wipe in several years where Bitcoin is closer to 100K than 200K. In this video, I'm going to simplify the math like I always do so that you can answer the question for yourself. Regardless if you're a power gamer, a streamer, a casual, or anyone in between. And that way you don't have to base your answer off of some random Reddit thread or rumor that is just based off of somebody's opinion and no facts. Now, as most folks know, the Bitcoin farm requires your generator running to work, and that requires fuel. This means you need to find fuel or buy it to run your Bitcoin farm. That's a cost, right? Wrong. I do not use the cost of fuel in any of these calculations. When you look at the big picture, it just doesn't make any sense. The Bitcoin shouldn't have to bear the cost of fuel when there's so much other stuff going on. Now, I'm going to expand on this in a few other places in the video, but I wanted to warn you now, I don't think fuel matters. What you should be worrying about are the costs that actually have a meaningful impact on the economics of the Bitcoin farm. For example, the components to construct it. Those directly impact the cost of each module. And for these, I use the average prices right now as I'm making this video, but we're kind of past that stage where the prices are really expensive. I do throw a little bit of a buffer in there, pump it up, but it shouldn't blow out these prices too much anyways. The biggest expense in the farm as it is right now is the graphics card, and that's usually how it is. So the parts are just a minor piece of it. For example, I use 350K for the cost of graphics cards. Now, as of this video, if you're watching when I first released it, graphics cards are about 270 to 300K. I went with 350 to be just conservative. Plus I think graphics cards might bump up a little bit once this video is released and people start buying them up because they want to get their farms built. And that right there is a great reason to subscribe and have the notification bell turned on because this is par for the course with my videos. The notification gang definitely gets first dibs on this information and usually makes the most money out of it. But to round this all out, I used 115K on Bitcoins as well on top of the 350 for cards. It's a little conservative. Bitcoin has been below that, but it's mostly been above it. But it's just an assumption because the price could change at the flip of a switch because of the economy or because BSG decides to change it. So with those two assumptions set, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video and answer the question you all clicked on it for. Should you build the Bitcoin farm? As simple as that question is to ask, it's actually really complex to answer. Up front, I think everybody should build a Bitcoin farm one. I believe this is achievable by any gamer, as the biggest hurdle is therapist level three. The cost isn't that high either. It's about four to five million rubles, and that's easily achievable in just a few hours of gameplay if you're following any of my loot guides. And with the level one farm built with only one graphics card in it, it only takes like 17 days to pay for itself and everything involved with the cost of it building the farm. And then after that, it generates free profit for the rest of the wipe. Now, if you go to 10 cards, it takes about six and a half weeks to break even. This covers the cost of about the 800K to build it, as well as the 3.5 million rubles in graphics cards, assuming you bought them all off the flea market. But remember, a non found and rate graphics card is only worth about 125,000 rubles. And that's if you sell it to therapist. And we're all gonna end up with those. If you're anything like me, when you find a graphics card in RAID, you're scrambling to pull stuff out of your secure container oh, so that you can this? slip that thing right into your prison wallet. Ah! That way you get to keep it even if you die. Now, if you survive the RAID, that graphics card's worth whatever the market's going to pay for it, which like right now is about 300K. But if you die, you still get the graphics card, but it's only worth 125,000 rubles. But graphics cards produce Bitcoins at the same rate regardless of their found and RAID status. And an important fact to keep in mind is that you can add and remove cards from your farm at, at your own desires. So if you have a found and raid card in your farm, you die with one, you can swap those two cards, take the found and raid out, the non-found and raid goes in, and then you can sell that found and raid on the flea market for whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. Now, if all 10 of your cards in the level one farm are put in there this way, you know, they're worth 125K, it takes less than three weeks for the farm to pay for itself. And then after those three weeks, regardless of how you got your cards, 
the farm pays about 95,000 rubles per day in pure profit. Now, another potentially bigger reason everyone should build a level one Bitcoin farm is all the other modules that are running in your hideout. Everything except the laboratory requires fuel to run and fuel isn't free. You either have to spend money to buy it, you have to buy the barter items to get it, or you have to go into raid and get those barter items or the fuel itself and get out with it. By not using a station that can generate some kind of value to you, you're essentially missing out on free rubles. And it's just so much wasted potential. Now, it might sound weird, but this same principle is exactly why I say you shouldn't count fuel in the Bitcoin farm. For me, I take it as a given that I'm going to be running the hideout all day, every day, crafting, generating super waters, and running my scav case. And this is more than enough value for me, excluding the Bitcoin farm. As it is right now, with the current price of fuel at 167,000 rubles per can from Jaeger 2, you're less than 8,000 rubles per hour to power your hideout. If you're even doing the simplest crafts, you're saving money or generating enough profits to cover that cost and have tens of thousands of rubles left over. And if you use my crafting guides, you don't even have to put that much work into it. You just do what I tell you to do and you're gonna make plenty of money. And then all these numbers are excluding the Bitcoin farm. So the Bitcoin farm essentially ends up being icing on the cake. And then one thing to consider with this is there's a lot of folks out there that might only be able to play one raid a day or log in for 20, 30 minutes to cycle their crafts, collect their insurance, or collect their money from Ragman for stuff they've sold on the flea. This fits perfectly with the Bitcoin farm as it provides that constant boost to your bank account regardless if you can go into raid or not. So when you do have a few hours to play, there's just that extra bonus of cash in your stash that you can use to build kits. And just remember, with the current phase that Tarkov is in with our wipes and the six month cycles, the sooner you build this, the better. But even if you're worth three months into the wipe, if you're watching this two, three months from now, it's still worth it building a level one farm because how quickly it pays for itself. God, I sound like I've got stock in Tarkov graphics cards or something, but it's just how the math works out. Now, going forward for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna assume you fill up your farm. So if a level two, you've got 25 cards and a level three, you have 50. If you wanna see what 15 cards in a level two does or 33 cards in a level three, feel free to go look at my spreadsheet. It's pretty easy to use. You can plug in the numbers of everything you got and figure out where you fall. But moving past that, filling the level two farm, you're gonna to need to spend close to about 900,000 rubles just to get it built, then another 5.25 million more to get all your cards. Not taking into consideration any money you've made from the level one farm while you're upgrading or anything like that, the level two farm with 25 cards will take about 76 days or 11 weeks to pay for itself. After that, it generates 138,000 rubles per day of pure profit. Now onto the big boy, the level three farm. This wipe is different than previous wipes. I used to always take the solar power and throw that into the level three Bitcoin farm because it was really the only reason you had to build it. But now solar pays for itself. So I've pulled its cost out of the level three Bitcoin farm since it's self-sufficient. And even though it's required for the Bitcoin 3, so is the generator and the Intel center and all the other chains of stuff you have to build, but they have their own utility, so we don't count that cost. Now, if you disagree with this or you're not understanding the math, I did a whole video explaining that. Go check that out. Uh, it explains all of that better than we'll do here. But back to the Bitcoin 3, the total cost here with all of the upgrades, the one, two, three, all 50 year cards, you're pushing over 20 million rubles. This is a massive investment, and it's the biggest one as somebody who has an EOD account will make. Non-EOD players, your stash upgrades still swamp this cost, but it doesn't matter. This is still a huge choice to make with investment. To cover this cost, you're gonna need 100 days, or just over 14 weeks. But after that, the farm's gonna generate about 210,000 rubles per day for you. So that there is one way of looking at it, the break-even method, if you will. And I do this because it's the easiest to understand and it covers the broadest range of people and how they wanna look at it. Personally, I look at the Bitcoin farm as kind of like a savings account or uh, an investment fund, if you will. So I got my Bitcoin farm level two up a couple of weeks ago and I've almost got my level three. So for argument's sake, let's say it took me a month to get my level three Bitcoin farm built and fully filled. That means I have five months of runtime, assuming a six month wipe. 20 million over five months is 4 million a month. And if the Bitcoin farm ha is generating Bitcoins at 115K per Bitcoin, this is about 6.3 million per month in revenue. And if you look at all that together, that means my investment is generating about 60% return. And I do this because it builds off the idea that money sitting in your stash is useless. A player who has 10 million rubles and a player who has 500 million rubles, those two players don't have much difference from one another. They have the same access to everything, assuming everything else is the same as far as trader access. 
you can buy the same stuff. So by investing your rubles, you know, taking that money that just sitting in your stash, you can generate constant cash flow. But along with this, we have to keep in mind, Bitcoin is not a static price like most things in the game. It changes based on the IRL value of the currency. Now it isn't tied directly to BTC anymore. BSG put a conversion in there because there was a period of time where it was worth like 800K, 900K, it was just breaking the economy. But we've seen them leave it put at between two and 300K and not monkey with it anymore. So if you see BTC go up in, in real life and it drags it up in the game and we start pushing two, 300, you just have that much more money you're gonna make if you've already invested. Now on the flip side, Bitcoin could go down. I completely accept that argument, but I don't think we're gonna see it go below 100K and that's just a gut feeling. BSG could easily tweak the Bitcoin value ratio, whatever you want to call it, to keep it in that 100 to 120K range. I, I just don't think it, if it 50, 60, 70K, it really fits in the way the game works right now with the barters and some of the other stuff. So there's just not a lot of risk with the price of Bitcoin going down versus up in this whole system, this whole economics, if you want to look at it that way. Now, I know a couple of you are probably still chomping to the bit, so let's expand a little bit on fuel and why I don't include it. The single biggest reason, honestly, is because it's so incredibly complex and varying based on who you are. Do you buy your fuel? Do you barter? Do you use metal fuel cans? Do you use blue fuel cans? Do you use the empties to craft and then sell stuff or to use stuff? Do you have solar? What is your hideout management skill at? All of these things just muck up the number so much that there's not a consistent way to do it for everybody. That fact alone makes it impractical for me to include fuel in the price. But past all of that, another thing that I don't take into consideration is not collecting coins. So if you're someone who only plays a couple of days a week, it might not be worth going past the level two farm because at 25 cards, it only takes about three days to fill up your Bitcoin farm and then it just pauses. At 50 cards, you fill up every 40 hours. So you need to log in basically every day, day and a half to collect your coins. And that's perfectly fine for a streamer like me or a power gamer, but I totally understand the folks that don't want the idea of a game being so demanding on their time. So take that into consideration. That is also a factor in here. And that leads me into the last little bit. Don't take this too seriously. It's a game, guys. Raids are still the best way to make money, especially your scabs. There's no risk. This whole thing is just a nice way to generate side revenue, open up some barters for you that you might not have otherwise, and give you something to work for if you're a completionist. Now to wrap this all up simply in a nice little bow, I'll put it like this. Everybody should probably build a level one Bitcoin farm and fill it with 10 cards. Anyone who plays at least once a week for most of the wipe is probably better off building level two and filling it with 25 cards. And if you're somebody who plays all wipe, there's not really any reason for you not to get the level three and put 50 cards in it. Just get her done, fill her up, and then you're happy with all that revenue it's generating. But that's it. Just like every wipe, we're finished. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Wish you the best of luck in your raids, and we'll see you in Tarkov.